Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be my review on the latest ABH release, which is the Norvina palette. And I'm also just gonna briefly touch on the lip glosses. The new um, liquid glow highlighters that they came out with were um, meant for deeper skin tones, well, deeper than me, obviously. So it's not something I can really demo for you guys or put on without it looking kind of odd. It wouldn't even do them justice. Ripley did get them, so I would advise you to check out her Instagram for her thoughts on them. I feel like I've been gone forever. I have been gone at least three weeks, maybe almost a month at this point. Um, as I mentioned like two videos ago, sometimes I just need to like unplug and take some mental health time for me. And even though I was feeling better, I went through this phase where I was just like, I don't know, I just was kind of feeling like in a in a rut, in a hole, and I didn't feel like filming. And even now, if you guys have any other video requests, um, I am gonna be doing, starting back up my liquid lipstick reviews probably next week. Um, the only difficulty with that is I need to make sure that I am home for an entire day uh, working from home so I have time to do the check-ins under the same circumstances, like uh, the same lights and all of those things, uh, just to be fair about it. But if you have any other ideas that you guys um, kind of like content you would like to see, I feel like I've reviewed every single eyeshadow palette on the face of the planet and I'm like, how many more eyeshadow palettes can I review? Um, so I've just been feeling like uninspired lately. So if you guys have any requests of anything in particular you'd like to see, um, I do have some more skincare stuff in the works. Again, that always takes me a while because going through all the ingredients and um, testing them takes quite some time for me. So that stuff will be coming up. But if you have any other ideas or anything that you'd like to see, let me know and I would be happy to do some of those because right now I'm just kind of like, I don't know. I've been like throwing myself into trying to do like healthy hobbies. Like um, I've upped my personal training to three times a week and then I have an extra day a week of an hour of cardio, which if you guys have been watching me, you guys know I hate working out, but um, I figure it's something healthy and something that's not going out and drinking or eating a bunch of junk food that I can try to focus on right now that's good for me. So look, I'm getting little baby muscles. You guys may think like that's no big deal, but for me that's like, I feel like Arnold Schwarzenegger right now. Oh, just kidding. I feel like I need to like start eating some protein bars and get with the bros and I'm just kidding. As always, there will be timestamps below because I'm gonna cover a bunch of things. I'm going to talk about cost. I'm going to do a demo. I actually did one eye one way and one eye the other way. I wanted to show you a couple of the more difficult colors I find to work with on one eye and then the way I like to use some of the shimmers on my other eye. Um, I'm gonna have swatches, all the usual stuff. So first thing I'm gonna show you guys is something that I screen grabbed off of the ABH there like IGTV which I never watched so I don't know if you guys watch IGTV and you already saw this um, it is long because it talks about the palette and the creation and the lip glosses and the liquid glows if you don't care to see that I'll have a timestamp right here in the screen where you can skip ahead and since it was optimized for IGTV the screen is going to be flipped you're going to see some of the prints for what it's talking about in the beginning before it disappears and it's also not going to take up the whole screen i'm sorry there's not a whole lot i can do about that um i personally like watching videos uh by norvino when they make something because i love to hear the inspiration for the product and why she created what she did i always like to learn that about any product that i'm talking about or using it gives me a sense of ownership in the product as well um so i'm going to show you guys that now and again if you don't care to watch that There'll be a timestamp here where you can skip ahead. Hi everyone, this is Norvina. Welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am going to talk to you all about fall 2018 for Anastasia Beverly Hills. So I just got the PR kits for all of our fall launches and I kind of wanted to talk to you about the product while they're in the PR kit at the same time. And we'll start with Liquid Glow. For those of you that aren't familiar with Liquid Glow, this is something that we launched last year. It's basically a liquid highlighter. It wears really beautifully and naturally on your skin. The difference between a liquid glow and a powdery glow is this is second skin in the sense that you don't need to have a full face of makeup to apply, for instance, like you would a powder highlighter. In order to apply a liquid glow, you can put it over bare skin, tinted moisturizer, or a full face, and it just feels really smooth, really natural. That melts into the skin, and that is where liquid glow comes in. 
When we launched Liquid Glow last year, we launched four different colors and I had been working the whole time on creating some shade extensions for deep skin tones and they are here. There are three new Liquid Glow shade extensions for deep skin. They are Patina, Penny, and Rose Gold. This is the three shade extension Liquid Glow PR box. How gorgeous is this image? I absolutely die for this photo shoot. This is La Portier, and this makeup is of course by one of my bestest friends, Molly Magic. You should definitely be following her on Instagram. It's King Molly Magic. I'll put some information in the caption. So with most shade descriptions, I really prefer to be actually descriptive of the color. Basically the shade names for these will tell you a lot about what to expect for them to look like. Penny is an amazing color. What I love about it is that it is in essence a copper, but it is not so, so red that it basically no longer is a highlighter and just becomes a blush. What's great about it is that it has a cool enough tone that it doesn't get super warm because nobody wants an orange or really dark coppery red highlighter and it wears absolutely beautiful. It has these really gorgeous subtle pearls that catch the light and become just intense. Patina is a really awesome shade. It is a deep cool tone bronze and I don't see a color like this in highlighters very often. It has the perfect balance of warmth of golds and of nudes in there that make it just this gorgeous neutral patina color that I happen to think looks beautiful on olive skin tones. Rose gold is pretty self-explanatory. It is a super pretty metallic rose gold color. I think this one's gonna be really popular. I think all of them really will be. It's really just based on preference and figuring out what is the best color of the three for you. Moving on to our brand new super glittery lip glosses. We are launching five super glittery, shimmery glosses just in time for summer. So this is the PR kit for the lip glosses. So here are the five brand new glosses and everybody loves neutrals, but what we were missing in the line is more of a really sparkly, shiny, shimmery gloss that was perfect for summer. What you're gonna see with these glosses is that they're all fairly light. It's really about the different deposit of sparkles and pearls that I selected in order to have the effect that it will. Starting off with Sunscape. This is the peachiest out of all of them. It is essentially a really beautiful metallic peach with larger peachy pearls inside. Estella, this is obviously named after a star. What I love about this one is that it looks like a cluster of stars. It has so many small pearls in there. It is the most silvery out of all of them. It has a mixture of pink peaches, silvers, even a light hint of blue in there. It is so, so pretty and I think would be ideal for someone with a fair complexion. Freya, this is my jam. This is so freaking gorgeous. It is a perfect combination of gold. You've got pink in there and a little bit of lilac. So it becomes this gold pinky lilac. Okay, so if Unicorn from the Dream Glow Kit, which is a highlighter, Unicorn, was a gloss, it would kind of be this one. Luna, I love this gloss. If you are an all gold sparkly lover, this is the one for you. It's basically a mixture of multiple sizes of gold, a really fine, pretty gold pearls, and it's just super sparkly. Venus. I love this color too so much. I think between Venus and Freya, I will never need a gloss again. This one is not gold, unlike Freya. It has the pinks, it has the subtleties in there. It's really soft. So you've got that mixture of pink with a little bit of lilac, but it doesn't have any gold. Okay, everyone, that is everything for glow and lip. Thank you so much for watching me and I can't wait to see you shine and sparkle. Don't forget to tag me. Have a wonderful day. Bye. The creative process for me always starts as visions. I was always kind of a daydreamer since I was a kid. I start thinking about how I want something to look and I get visions about the product, the colors. Sometimes I will create a character in my head and that character, if you would, creates the whole mood or vibe of a product. For me, a lot of my creative process is the sensory trip 
of, you know, piecing together my visions, colors that I like, textures that I want. It really boils down to the final character. So it's almost like seeing a cluster of images and colors all coming together and forming one thing. And in this case, it's Norvina. For me, this palette was so important because I really want to put my name on something, but I was worried and I was hesitant for a long time as I didn't know what part of Norvina I wanted to express. I didn't want to limit myself. I didn't want to typecast myself as a particular, you know, arrangement of 14 colors. I'm more than that. I'm more moods than that, more emotions, more hair colors. The most important part was what do you identify with that looks really good and what are things that you want to show the world as, okay, you wanted to know what a Norvina palette will look like for a long time. This is basically my essentials and this is what Norvina is. It's what I could live with no matter what. It's what makes me feel good and what I feel makes me look good from day to night. And it doesn't really have a season for me. I would wear these colors year round. Norvina is the first touch of it. And in the ABH brand, we want to be there for everyone that loves ABH and those that love me too. Hi everybody, this is Norvina, and I am so happy to introduce my palette. Finally, I think I've been hinting towards this palette for a year now, and it's finally here, and I couldn't be any more happy. So the inside of the palette mirrors the exterior packaging. It is the felt velvety material that we use on our palettes. As a start, I felt the best way to do this was colors that I would wear always, no matter what, that are an easy reach, but that I still feel really good about. I'm a big fan of deep pigmented ultra mattes, and then I need a metallic, I need a pop, and I wanna see that pearl. What you'll see in this Norvina palette, particularly by ABH, that's a little bit different than our others, is that this palette has seven metallics and seven mattes. For me, that's really important because, as I mentioned, I do like metallics and I want to have the variety to create a bunch of looks. I don't want you to see the outside of it and it's lavender and that's the only note that I'm giving you and that's the only look that you can pretty much get out of it. I want that versatility. So as with any palette, you know, obviously I wanted to have a matte color that was very light and that's where base came in. It's pretty standard when it comes to what your base color would be. I didn't want a white and I didn't want anything pink or peachy. I wanted kind of a true eggshell. Soul is basically, I think, the kickoff color for this entire palette. It's a representation of my ideal perfect purple. I really liked incense. You know, it's this kind of like muted brown and it really enhances and helps intensify the colors that are around it. Love is the perfect blush pink color. I'm so obsessed with it. It pairs so beautifully with Soul. It's like the sister of it. The best way that I can describe Volatile is a really deep taupe that has a reddish undertone. Eccentric is a gorgeous brick orange. Passion is an interesting shade. It is a really dark, cool tone berry color. Dreamer for me is the perfect highlight color. This is a, a cream color with just a hint of peach. Summer is such a beautiful color. It is a very light bronze with a violet hue. Wild Child is just an explosion of pinks, magenta. It makes that perfect candy colored pink that I love that will really, really pop on your eyes and it will stay very pink without being too deep. Rose gold is so gorgeous that I think is so rich and sultry, it's very smoldering. By now, it's no mystery that I'm obsessed with all things galaxy and space and just those cluster of stars and, and, and the way the gases around form this gorgeous kind of hues of purples and blues. So Celestial has basically my representation of what that would be of purple and blues and all that stardust in there that just makes it a really cool color. 
Dazzling is a really deep bronze with a pink shift. It stays pretty and playful, but it gives me more depth and more intensity than Summer. Drama is a really, really dark amethyst with a black base. It's a very cool color to even wear in, so if it smudges, it'll look really good. Thank you so much, you guys. This palette is so important to me. I'm so excited that you're seeing it and we're talking about it. You're gonna see looks from me. I can't wait to see looks from you. It's gonna be surreal. I always see looks of products that I make, but I think seeing it with a palette that has my name on it, that's a first, so I'm incredibly excited. Um, don't forget to tag me, hashtag Norvina, and I can't wait. So where you can find this product, um, it's been on the ABH site since 717. It goes online for Ulta on 729 and it'll be in stores in Ulta on 85. It'll be online in Sephora, Macy's, Dillard's, Nordstrom, and Sephora inside JCPenney on 87 and on 817 in all retail stores, which they sell in, which is Sephora, Macy's, Dillard's, Nordstrom's, and Sephora inside JCPenney. Uh, Sephora Canada will get this in store on 8.8 and International is available online purchase. I asked if this palette is limited edition or permanent and they said currently it is limited edition but depending on how well it's received um, it could be permanent. Um, I know that that's kind of like a wishy washer answered for some people but typically if, when you do like a collab or something if it's linked to a particular person that's not in their company you have to have like a set frame for when you're going to pay them and when it's going to be done you can't kind of keep track of that stuff forever um, unless you sign a contract saying like you pay me for this amount of time and then after that i release kind of like a licensing deal their name um so since this is um Anastasia's daughter, uh, Claudia or Norvina, this could be made permanent if people like it. I do find though um, that they have been really good. I remember in the beginning on some of their launches, we'd all crash their site because we'd all log on to get stuff. And now they've got, I have to say, they do the best releases ever because they don't give you an exact time and they always have plenty of stock. Um, so even, and how the way they scatter their releases, so they'll put it on their site first, which is actually really smart because then they don't have to pay the margins that like retailers will take. The pr price of the product will stay the same, but if they're taking anywhere from 40 to 70% of that cost for just having it on their site or in stores, it's smart to do a head start on their site. I personally haven't always had the best shipping with ABH. Um, not that my stuff comes broken, it just takes a really long time. So I would always prefer when I did order to order off of Sephora or Ulta or something like that, especially because it's easier for me to return if something was broken or I didn't like it. It's just easier for me to go into the store. The cost for this palette is $42, which is in keeping with their other one besides the Makeup by Mario, which is a little more expensive. Um, you get 14 shadows and then a brush that I took out, you'll see in the swatches. The packaging for this is their standard kind of like felt um, packaging and this reminds me of Norvina's hair. I think this must be one of her favorite colors, um, this kind of like purple color. The box again is standard. Um, it has all the information on the back as well. This palette is made in the USA, but the brush is made in the People's Republic of China. So in this palette, you're getting 14 shades. You are getting seven mattes and seven metallic finishes. This whole top row is obviously metallics and this whole bottom row is matte. Although I will say a couple of them like Soul and Love have a bit of shimmer to them. You'll see in the swatches. All of these shades are new. I had thought that rose gold was ex an existing color because in their summer collection of 2017, they launched a color called rose gold, but the colors are completely different and that was limited edition. Um, so those two colors are different. So everything in here is unique to this palette. And currently they are not offering any of these shades as individuals. Each one of these shadows is 0.71 grams each for a total of 9.94 grams total of product in this palette. It's slightly less than Soft Glam because that palette you've got 0.74, um, but it's a bit more than their other palettes, which are typically 0.7 grams. Each shadow, I mean. The shelf life on this palette is 18 months. I don't have an order date or shipping information or anything like that for you guys because I did receive this in PR. Sorry about that. This product is cruelty free, but it is not vegan because some of the shades do contain carmine and beeswax. 
you hear the little pitter patter of little feet, it's my dog just walking around. She went out to the bathroom a little while ago and I gave her a treat and now she's trying to hustle me for some more. She's smart. Now I'm gonna show you guys a cost breakdown on the screen right here. Uh, the cost comes in at $4.23 per gram, which is a better value than their other 14 pan palettes of theirs. Um, again, with the exception of Soft Glam. For the ingredients, I can't find any other formula that's exactly like this online. This is different from their other palettes because these shades contain cocoa seed butter in them, um, well, the metallics especially, which is making them very slick. Uh, the sim similar formulas to this, I find that these mattes are in keeping with their standard mattes. Um, these the shimmers on this remind me more of the Makeup by Mario palette where they're extremely soft and if you blend too many of these together they will kind of like muddy into each other so I find um, what's best with this palette is to stick to like three colors like two mattes and a shimmer or if you're going to even do four at max like two mattes and two shimmers if you're going to do a gradient but I find that it kind of like doesn't melt well. Um, and I also will say for the wear, when I first apply these, these actually look better like 10 minutes in once my body heat warms them up and they kind of like melt in for the shimmers, I mean, opposed to when you first apply them. Um, this is in standard keeping with um, their Modern Renaissance and their other palettes. It's not as soft as Subculture. Um, I try not to watch anybody's reviews and honestly, I haven't been on YouTube in like three weeks, which is odd for me. I just... I don't know, I fell down like this weird rabbit hole and I started watching videos on dentures because I was like fascinated about how they do the extractions and how they keep them in when they eat. And then I started watching all this weird stuff. I don't even know, like I just started watching like weird ASMR stuff about like eating, like dogs eating popcorn and stuff. <laughs> I don't even know. All this stuff just kept popping in recommended and I kept clicking on it and it just brought me down this really weird rabbit hole. So then I was like, Oh, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to stay off YouTube for a while. Um, the application of these, I'm going to show you guys a demo. Um, but quickly, I'm going to talk about why I demoed the ones that I did. So today on my eyes is actually, um, I misspoke when I said it, one of the looks is like the favorite. The favorite I do when I incorporate the shimmers. Otherwise, I just love to use the mattes. Um, right now, I have on incense as my transition. I have eccentric in my crease and then I have passion all over my lid and then I brought eccentric down on my lower lash line. Um, these are my favorite kind of colors. Like I love base, I like incense, volatile, eccentric, passion. Um, Dreamer is a nice highlight color. Summer I don't find anything unique but it's still beautiful. Wild Child is kind of a pain in the butt to work with. Rose Gold is pretty um, but I don't think I would describe that as a rose gold. I don't know why, it seems um, a bit more coppery to me. Celestial is a pretty color, but it's a little more difficult to work with as well. These three right here, I find the most difficult to work with in the palette. Dazzling is pretty, but nothing unique. I really do like drama. I prefer like a black based purple um, for me anyway. So I do like that one too. Um, I don't like the soul color. I find that this is a very like, tricky color to work with because unless you're extremely fair this is going to show up it could show up as like a bruise i find this is um a very blue based gray purple it's almost like a periwinkle it does kind of match norvina's hair which is beautiful on her but um when i'm working with this even though this love color is like the pinky peach color it still has like that kind of like, it's almost like Rick's mixing red and like a blue together and you're gonna get a purple, which can look like a deeper purple when these two are mixed and it can kind of look like a bruise. Um, so I don't really care for this color. I do like base, but it's nothing unique. Incense is great. Again, volatile, eccentric, and passion, I really do like. So uh, if anything, I stick with mostly mattes in here and I also have Dreamer in my inner corner just very lightly. So you'll see in the swatches when we get to those, all of these swatch really well except for these three with a brush anyway. Uh, the trick for those to me is to pat them on instead of swiping them on. I do find it a little more difficult to even pick up with the brush so in those three colors I have to really like kind of swatch my brush back and forth to pick up a decent amount. Um, as always I always use glitter glue with any shimmers, uh, glitters, pigments because my eyes are hooded so if I don't 
and it goes for any of them. As soon as I open my eyes, it will stick up here and then it moves all around and it doesn't stay put. So I can't speak to how any of these perform without a glitter glue because all shimmers would suck on me if I didn't use one. These also work uh, really well with those old school sponge tip applicators that you guys had told me to use a while ago. Um, I really like those. Now I'm gonna show you guys the demo. Again, I did one eye one way and one eye the other way. Sometimes it's like really off-putting because it doesn't look even and for me I like balance. Um, but I've gotten some requests before to show like multiple looks. Um, so I, it was just easier for me to do one eye one way and one eye the other opposed to taking it off. If you guys don't care to watch the demo, I will have a timestamp again here in the screen where you guys can just skip ahead. Okay guys, so I think I'm gonna film the review and the demo on two separate days because I'm gonna do one eye one way and one the other and it's a pain in the butt to have to take everything off and restart one side of your face. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do one eye the way that I've been enjoying using this palette and I'm going to show you in a demo of the three colors that I find the most difficult to use which are the Wild Child, Rose Gold, and Celestial. Um, all the mattes blend really nice. The rest of the metallics are nice. Um, I find those three, I have a little bit more of a problem picking up with a brush. Um, you can use those sponge tip applicators if you like, but um, I almost find them like a little too slick. So as always, I'm going to prep my eye first with Urban Decay's Primer Potion. I already did this eye. I'm trying not to keep studio lights super blasting loud um, because I feel like that kind of drowns out true color and it also like blurs just kind of everything. So um, somebody asked me if I would brighten my lights up a little more. I think this is pretty bright judging uh, what I see on the monitor and what I see my iOS is and uh, my white balance and all of that. So. Um, I'm, again, I'm going to try not to drown everything out. So first color I'm going to pick up is this love color. Um, and as always, I will have the name of the color and the brush in the screen here. Uh, just like with all of ABH's palettes, I find just a touch does. If you bounce in here or swirl, the shadows typically are soft, just like Modern Renaissance, which um, I've heard some people talking about. I try not to watch any reviews. I actually have been off of YouTube forever. but. Um, so it doesn't taint me and I just find that if you just touch the shadow and it's good so I'm gonna do this eye with the colors that I find a little more challenging and then the other eye with the way that I've been liking to use this palette the most um, a little goes a long way with these shadows they are very pigmented one thing I will say though is you can tell just in the palette right here these aren't very vibrant like this is more of like a muted um, pink color you know it's or a salmon it's not gonna be something that is neon if that's what you're looking for so first bring that one up now i'm going to go in with a color that this is almost like a periwinkle like morphed with a purple it's like an ac lavender with some blue undertones in it this soul uh, describing color undertones is not my forte now if you mix these two you could get a color that kind of looks like a bruise so you're going to want to be a little careful not to like purposely kind of like overlap them Again, just basic color theory, um, depending on which ones you use. Some colors don't mix well, so they look complementary next to each other, but you don't want to mix them. I typically don't care for a color like this against my skin tone um, because it can look like a bruise. Again, purples are very difficult to get correct without making it look like a bruise on a lot of skin tones. I'm gonna use um, some glitter glue like I always do on the back of my hand with a flat synthetic shader brush. Um, I don't know what shimmers I like to use without glitter glue because if I don't use it um, when my eyes open, it transfers up into the hood of my eye or into my crease and all over the top. So I've just used one since I've ever used loose pigment shadows after I learned my lesson. Um, you don't wanna like gob this on. I kind of use it like spirit gum. I take it on a brush and I kind of tap it on just a little bit until it gets kind of tacky. If you use too much it'll turn into a slick. So first I'm going to take the color Celestial. Um, again these color these shades have cocoa butter in them and I do find that it makes them kind of slick. So I'm going to put this kind of like on the outer third of my eye. Well, maybe outer half see how close in I'm gonna come. And remember, wherever I put that glitter glue, it's really gonna stick, so um, sometimes that can make some shadows patchy. 
um, while you're first applying them. So now I'm gonna pick up Wild Child. And I'm gonna put this on, um, yeah, I guess like the t inner two thirds of my eye. Yeah. And we're gonna try to blend them together in the middle there. Now these colors work much better when you pack, pat, 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 opposed to trying to swipe. Now that's um, all I'm gonna do on the upper part of this eye. I'll come back and finish uh, the lower lower lash line in a minute. Now I'm gonna show you how I've been enjoying wearing this palette. I'm going to pick up this love color. And I'm gonna put this up on my transition. Again, be careful with how much you pick up because these are pigmented. Um, if you have a really wiry haired brush that you're using and you're digging into them, it's going to make them fall apart just like uh, Modern Renaissance. Um, I try not to watch anybody's reviews prior to when I review it. I've just seen some comments on my Instagram about it. I find all the mattes perform really well. Um, I, I, I'm just not a huge fan of some of these colors. Some of them I like a lot. Some of them I would never reach for, like um, that soul color, just because it's not a favorite of mine against my skin tone. Some people would love it. On my Wayne Goss number six brush, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of this incense color and I'm gonna bring it right into like this little crease, transition that pink down a little. Got a nice little blemish going on there. Next, I'm gonna pick up some of this eccentric on this Wayne Goss number 19 brush. I'm gonna focus this more heavily on the crease there. A little more down on my lid. Um, I kind of really like the mattes the best, all blended together, minus that sole color, because I don't like that. I feel like that's a hard color for a lot of people to pull off without looking like a bruise. You have to be, I think, almost like super fair, in my opinion anyway, again, I know they're People of all different skin tones that like that color. I kind of like that gradient that we have going on now. Um, I don't see any of them going on patchy, all very smooth. I'm gonna pick up this passion color on this Wayne Goss number 20. And I'm gonna focus this on this outer third right here and up into that crease. Now this color is super pigmented and it can, depending on how you place it, look if you see right there, kind of stuck a little bit. I'm gonna need to go back in and blend that. Sorry, I'm looking off to the side. I have to look in my mirror while I'm doing this. God only knows what my makeup would look like otherwise. You can see this one color here, um, it does require a little more work. I don't know if you can see right in there. I'm going to go back to my glitter glue and my synthetic shading brush and I'm going to do the same thing all over my lid. Now the color I'm gonna pick up is that rose gold. Even though it um, doesn't swatch as smooth, I find when you pick it up and pack it on, it's really pretty. So I actually wore this to the Hourglass event while I was testing. Normally when I get a palette, I use it until I have tested all the colors. Right there you can see I got two little specks of fallout. Um, nothing major though. I think I might have picked too much up on my brush. I'm gonna kind of feather that out into that darker color. And then I'm gonna pick up some of this drama. And I'm just gonna kind of feather that in. up 
that fallout. And then make sure you go over those two lines and make sure they blend together. It's not just like a harsh line of where they stop. So I'm going to pick up my Shigihoto GSN7 and base and I'm going to highlight both of my brow bones. I like this isn't a stark white in there, um, cause stark whites are kind of hard. Now to do my under eyes, I'm gonna pick up some of this incense on this um, Sonya G Smudger 2. Uh, make sure you don't have too much on there and go on this under eye. I'm gonna pick up the Sonya G Pencil 2 and I'm going to smudge that out. I'm trying to make a weird face so I don't pull in my eye. Next, I'm going to take the Esim T05 and I'm going to pick up some of this um, Volatile. I'm just going to pack that in on my rim. Like you can never truly judge until I have the lashes and everything on because it really changes the look. All right, and what do I want to do under here? So on this one, I'm going to pick up some eccentric on that uh, smudger too, and I'm going to go along this line. And then again, I'm going to take that same pencil two brush. I'm going to take the Esim T05 again. I'm going to pick up some of that passion. And I'm gonna smoke that out with the pencil too. It feels so weird when you do two eyes because you feel so lopsided and uneven. I'm going to put some lashes on. I've gotta finish the inner corner and I'll be right back. Okay, I know my hair looks crazy, but um, I have a workout first thing in the morning again, so it seems kind of pointless to dry my hair only to have to put it back up, wash it again. Um, I'm wearing one of their new lip glosses called Sun Sunscape. I love these glosses. You do not need them all. I would just pick the one that you like the sparkle on. This one is my favorite. Um, the one thing I will say though is even with my lips, lips exfoliated and moisturized right now, I do tend to get like this white mad dog rim on the inside about, like they go on really smooth about like an hour or so in. I don't know if that's just me. This reminds me of, I used to love the Makeup Forever. They had those star glosses. Oh my God, I love them. And then they discontinued them. I love that because it just looks like, I don't know, just looks like juicy lips. I know how I did this is really confusing, so I'm gonna try to put up a little board, one of my photo boards so you can see. So this is the one that, for the colors, it's more of like a unicorn, I feel like. Um, if you like those kind of colors. Again, you have to pack this on, not swipe. And then this is the side that has been like my favorite that's a little more like sultry. If you can see that, I don't know. Um, so you have two different looks there. So we have this side. And then this side. Oop, I actually forgot, I'm going to take base I'm gonna take base and I'm going to highlight the inner corner there. Bring some light back into the eye there. Same thing here. There we go. And then this side. I know the way I did that was a little confusing, but I get people saying that they'd like to see two different looks. Um, and I'm just not gonna take off all my face makeup and do it all over again. Sorry guys, the rest of the videos take so long. So I'm gonna take all of this off. I will come back tomorrow and uh, do the actual review part with like a normal like matching eye on each way. How these wear, I find these in keeping with the rest of their eyeshadows. Again, I feel like these shimmers look better after like five to 10 minutes that you've had them on when your like body heat can kind of melt them into your skin a little bit more opposed to just kind of sitting on top. Now let's get into some swatches, guys. As always, Ripley was kind enough to swatch for me on her deeper skin. I will have her Instagram linked below. You guys should go follow her. I will also have her foundation shade listed below uh, as a point of reference. 
Okay guys, let's get into some swatches now. As always, I will be laying down a base of Urban Decay's Primer Potion first. I will be swatching my mattes with my Isom W23 brush, and I will be swatching the shimmers with my MAC 242 brush. In between swatches, I will be cleaning my brush off in my color switch so my brush will not be damp. The first swatch you will see will be a finger swatch, and the one right next to it will be a brush swatch, just so you can see the difference. There's something about the way you make me feel inside I'm counting down the days till we fly away Heading to the sun, only you and me I oh, don't wanna waste another day Being stuck here in this place No, I wanna hold your hand in mine Watch the sunset in your eyes Baby, I want us to act like we are 22 right Just let go, lose control, play songs on the radio too loud This could be magical Okay, now on to would I purchase this if it wasn't sent to me and would I recommend this? Um, honestly, while I love so many of the ABH products, I wouldn't purchase this. Um, I probably would have just based online just because I have FOMO, but after using it, this isn't something that since I've had it, it takes me a while to test products because I like to use every single shade in the palette before I give my opinion on it. I like to see how it wears throughout the day or night. I like to see if I get fallout on my face during the night with some of the shimmer. So it takes me a while to test everything, especially these aren't necessarily colors that I can wear for work. While I love passion, eccentric, volatile incense, um, I do like base, dreamer. Summer is nice, but again, I own shades like that. Uh, rose gold is nice, but I own shades like that. Dazzling is nice, but I own shades like that. I like drama. That's probably one of the more unique shades in this palette for me. Um, while I do have a lot of shimmery purples, um, that one is a bit more unique for me. This um, color story just doesn't speak to me. Um, I prefer more mattes than shimmers, and this has equal amounts. And while that does give you a wide range of looks that you can do, again, I find the best way that you're gonna be able to work these is pair like two or three of the mattes and then one shimmer all over your lid and then maybe one of the mattes to deepen out um, the outside. Otherwise, I just find that they don't blend together the best or they start to get kind of muddy looking with the shimmers anyway. If you don't have um, a ton of eyeshadows and you don't have colors like this, 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 I think that you could possibly like this if this color story speaks to you. Again, I just don't think it would be worth the money for me for the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven shades that I like in here that I don't really have. Uh, so basically half the palette is something that I wouldn't use. And it's not, these are beautiful colors. They're just not something that I reach for to put on my eye very often. Like Wild Child and Celestial, I will likely hardly ever use. That's just my personal opinion on them. I know some people have done some stunning looks from here. Um, like the colors I'm wearing on my eye today, I love, but that's just me sticking in the mattes. And since these three don't necessarily perform the best for me, I just think um, basically the best shadows in here are gonna be the mattes, and I just feel like it's a hefty price tag to only get use out of seven of the shadows in here. Keep in mind with all of ABH's shadows, um, I did see some comments on my Instagram when I was on there. Again, I haven't been on now in a while. I need to log back on. But um, I did see some people talking about Fallout. This doesn't have any more fallout for me than like the modern renaissance. If you have a really wiry hair brush and you're banging it in there, it's 
gonna have fallout because these shadows are really soft and they blend really nice. The only one that I've had problems with is Passion. Um, it's a really pigmented shadow and it's what I have all over my lid today, but if I pick it up with a smaller brush and I'm trying to just put it in my crease, it kind of sticks there and you definitely have to work with it a little more to blend it out. Okay, that's pretty much all I have to say about the palette. Now let's talk about the lip glosses. So I'm wearing Sunscape on my lips today. I don't know if you can start to see, can you see right here? this little like mad dog rim. Now my lips are fully exfoliated. Um, I used an exfoliating like little brush thing I got at Sephora and I also used a washcloth and I put oil on my lips. Um, my lips aren't dry at all. It's the same thing that happens to me with their liquid lipsticks. I get like a mad dog rim. I was gonna call it like butthole lips but I don't get like a white rim on my butthole which sounds disgusting. Maybe like a monkey's butthole. I don't know this sunscape I really really like and I also like the Venus one um, and then that Venus one is in my purse but again I do find after about an hour's worth of wear I start to get this like white rim on the inside which I would have to like take my nail or a napkin and kind of clean that up and then go back in with some more which is not the best um, if I'm out somewhere and it does that because then I can end up with like that mad dog rim. Um, their liquid lipsticks aren't my favorite, as you know if you've watched. Um, the, when they reformulated them, they were much better, but still compared to what's out there, they're not, they're just not good to me. Um, the color is stunning. I just don't like how they wear on me. Um, they're great if I just do a makeup look and I put them on and I wear them for about an hour, but any longer than that, if I wear them to work or something, I start getting flaky, they'll start peeling on that inside part of my lips. It may just be my body chemistry because I know tons of people love them. They're just not for me. Um, those liquid glows, like I mentioned, if um, you have deeper skin tone, I think you'll love the new ones. And if you have lighter skin tone, the original ones that they launched um, were really, really pretty. I could put those over foundation and it didn't pick up my foundation and like move it all around, which a lot of liquid highlighters do. Or I never understood it when you'd see someone put down a base and then put like a full coverage foundation over the top. It's like, what's the point of that? Because now you can't even see it. In that video with Norvina, she explains, um, it's just like, it, what this reminds me of is even though they look a little different, the Sunscape is the one that's the most color depositing because it has that like peachy pink color, which is what I love. Um, you don't need all of these. If you want one of these, I would just say pick the one that Norvina describes with the sparkle and the shimmer in there, that what you'd like, and then just get that one because these look very similar on the lips, all except for Sunscape. This one, again, gives me more of a tint than the rest of these, which this one just kind of gives um, me some shimmer. But again, the reflex are different but you don't need all of them so i hope you guys found this review helpful if you guys have any questions comments or concerns please leave them in the comment section down below thank you so much for tuning in guys and i will see you next time bye